you out if you don't get away from him. He should be like 200 feet away. Oh, oh. 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 Whose dog is that? Oh, sorry. Quip. <laughs> you guys have a meal for your dog? Your dog is going to scare the deer. Quip. Quip. You guys know why you're not no. supposed to feed the animals, right? No. Uh, no. Why? No. Tell us. Inform us. <laughs> Because the animals, they, you're going to make them accustomed to humans and then they won't know how to forage for themselves and get their own food. And then if you keep going up close to them, they can take those antlers and then impale you with them. But isn't it easier if we just feed them? No, it's not easier if we just feed them. They need to be living on their own. What happens when you go and there's nobody else to feed them? They're going to die. This is really important to leave no trace. You need to respect wildlife. If you're getting close to them to take photos and feeding them human food, they will get habituated to you and then be killed because of it. As well as animals like deer and elk have very big pointy antlers that could impale you if you were close to them. If it was a bear, that bear would get used to coming close to humans and would have to be killed because of it. It is very important we stay away from animals and let them do their own thing and eat their own food. Hey Sean, you ready to go out for a great day of hunting and fishing? Yes. I got some beers, man. Yeah, of course. I want to get as many as I can. I'll shoot some rabbits, some fish, some birds. Awesome! We yeah. gotta go. Let's go get us some rabbits. Okay, Come yeah, on, man. cool. Yeah. Oh, man, that was a good beer. Did you see what I got? Oh, I saw a rabbit. Oh, yeah, get him, get him, get him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that was awesome. Yeah, let's make it Oh, man, I need to oh, this, this backpack is too heavy. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. Okay, I can help you throw something. Yeah, we gotta get rid of some stuff. Okay, right? yeah. That's cool. Uh, no, we probably don't need it. Yeah, yeah you do need that? Yeah, we yeah, don't need okay. that. Oh, oh okay, this axe is also too heavy. I just put it here. Yeah, we don't yeah. need that. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. Alright. You see a pond? Mm hmm Oh! I don't know how to do it, Dan. Oh, we just found it. Okay. It's not a nice day for a walk. Yeah, look. It's okay. 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 Oh, I don't know. I guess we'll take it. I wonder if it's these guys are here. Pretty early. But, uh, is this your guys' You guys style? want a drink? We're, we're good it's, right I now. I got some Canberra. captain. It's really good. I think we're good. I think we're good. But that makes us wonder, are these are these your beer cans? No, nope, never seen them before. Oh. No. It's kind of funny because I see some more of these in your bag right there. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Um, I think well, you're just making stuff up. I mean, there's no one else out here. And you, I mean, you've already started drinking, so. I'm not drinking. <laughs> Okay. Is it just iced tea? Yeah, it's just water. Yeah. Well, with your stuff here, it's important to keep this with you, for one, for your own safety. You might need these things. Where did you guys find that stuff? Just up the trail there. Oh, I thought it was on my backpack. Yeah, I thought I carry that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's important to keep... Oh, <laughs> I got the sound. That's all right. That's yeah, okay. Well, I, think that's, I think that's somebody calling me. This is that... Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, we're pretty close. We almost got a fish. Yeah. That's awesome out here. Yeah, we just had some people come and interrupt us, say we're making a mess or something. I don't know. Okay, I'll call you back. Okay, bye. Okay. All right, like, well, yeah, we just think it's important for you guys to know that, like, this isn't cool. You're actually making a huge impact on this whole area. This kind of stuff will stick around for, like, years and years to come. It won't degrade. But also, when you have scented stuff like this, it's going to attract 
wildlife to the trail and that's not good. You don't want to use that to your advantage to be hunting them for that. They could be eating things like this, um, really getting them sick, killing them. It's even things like my apple, for example, I won't even throw my core because that is food source for animals, which habituates them. But also, depending what food this is, you could be introducing new species to potentially grow in the area. Yeah, but if we're hunting, changes. we want to attract the wildlife. Yes, but we no. are hunting. Yeah. I, like, to me, that doesn't sound like a problem. Like, I don't know what, what's the problem. Your actions are definitely impacting the ecological state of this area, and it means that nobody else can use it after you. Really? So it means really? I can't come back here? If you use it responsibly. Oh, man. Here, keep, oh, we got to put all this stuff away. Oh, wow. We got we to gotta make, make nice here. I'm going to put all this stuff away Thank because you. I don't want to be... you. I don't want to be not being able to come back to my favorite fishing hole. Thank you. That'd be great. Awesome. With this last scene here, we saw a lot of different problems with the uh, people using the environment. We need to make sure we're leaving an area better than we found it. We're not throwing beer cans. We're making sure we pack out everything we bring in. As well, for using areas uh, in the environment to use uh, for hunting and fishing purposes, that we know the regulations. Like in this last video, we saw they're fishing while using a gun. And that would obviously be not allowed anywhere. Another issue we saw was having a pack like this with all these danglies on it. It's incredibly easy to lose stuff. If this, say, were to clip, this would drop and you would have no idea. And now all of a sudden you're littering, it, littering in an environment and that could be something you needed. Make sure you know how to pack your bag properly so you're prepared for whatever might come <laughs> as well. As we saw earlier with them drinking in the video, they had a bottle of Captain Morgan. This would not be uh, something you need to pack on your trips for most times, especially if using the area for hunting and fishing purposes. With this last scene, we see some extreme examples of the worst things being done on crowd land. We need to remember when we're going to these areas that we're leaving it better than before. We're picking up all of our bottles, cans, garbage, even compostable waste. We're not just throwing into the bush. We also need to remember and keep in mind that lots of natural crown land areas in Alberta are used for hunting and fishing. Um, although this is great, we do not recommend that you ever approach anyone that has a firearm, especially if they're intoxicated. Um, that being said, if it comes from a friendly and natural interaction, that is one thing, but don't go seeking out this conversation. Um, as well, uh, lots of hunters and fishers are very friendly uh, they're actually the environmentalists. They have the deepest love and respect for the land. But sometimes it's good just to give them their space and let them do their own thing. Man, we should really get off this nice trail and just bushwhack through this vegetation. It'll be faster. It will be way faster. Let's go. Why would you take a shortcut when there's a perfectly good trail over here? Yeah, here's the trail. Because it's shorter. No, man, you're not supposed to be. That's not stuff you're supposed to walk on. Tell him, Sean, you're not supposed to walk there, man. Yeah, if you walk on uh, uh, like a uh, undurable place, it will uh, impact the uh, vegetation. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good we'll to come know. come back to the trail. Yeah, please. Thanks for, please. Walk through the street, or you could have walked around it. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> we lost our bits. Don't worry. We learned that if you were to stay on the trail, you wouldn't have lost everything. Come on, Meg. <laughs> 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 it's important to 
camp and hike on durable surfaces so we're not destroying any more vegetation than we already need to be. So by us creating a shortcut, it was completely unnecessary. <laughs> and when there's a perfectly good path, it's important to always stay on that path, even if it means you have to walk single file behind your friends. Hey, we got, we need some wood. What do you think of this tree? Oh, it looks pretty solid. Pretty big. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's take it down. You got a saw? I got the saw, man. I got, I got an ax. All right, let's go. Ah, stop what you're doing. <laughs> Why? Boy. Tree. It's hey, gonna make great firewood tonight. You want some Captain Morgan? Come down, girl. Like, <laughs> we, need some, we need some firewood. No, I'm good, but also. Oh, we'll make you firewood too, don't worry. <laughs> no, seriously, stop. No, no, no. We gotta we're gonna cut down stuff. this tree, and it's actually not even gonna burn well, first of all. It's well, a live tree, so a lot of water's in it. You sure? It's not gonna burn well. Huh. But also, take a look around. There's so many trees and branches that you could take that are already dead on the ground. You don't have to worry about cutting them. Well, I don't know, I really, I really like this tree. Dustin, we really like this yeah. tree, don't we? But think about what animals could be living in this tree or what other life this tree could be supporting. Well, we could give them a drink. <laughs> well, what do you want me to take then? <laughs> well, there's kind of a, a key thing to go at. It's called the four Ds, right? So it's dinky, distant, dead, and down. <laughs> so dinky, that means that it's generally supposed to be smaller pieces of wood. If you're lucky to find a big piece of wood that works. But yeah, something sort of thin. That's it's not, not supposed to be one. thicker than a wrist, but you collect a bunch of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Distance, you want to collect from a wide range of area. You don't want to take all the wood from one specific area. Also, it's good to look for a tree that's already dead. For a clear reason, that's already dead. You can use it for that. What and about that this tree? It's better, it's, the reason why I wouldn't pick this one is because it's not down. Or something like this one is already down on the ground. You don't have okay. to worry about cutting it. Because trees like this, even if they're dead, they're still supporting different organisms. There's bugs and birds that live in these trees. Something like this. Something like that would be much better. Exactly. So if you guys want to go around and collect some wood pieces, we can make a big pile. It makes it a lot easier to start a fire as well. Sounds good. Thank you for informing us. You're Cheers. <laughs> All right, so when you're collecting wood for a fire, it's super important that you're considerate of where and how you're gathering this wood. So as a reminder, there's the 4D acronym. So D for dinky, meaning a smaller in size. Distant, so gather from a, like a wider range of area. Uh, down, so the tree's already down and obviously dead. Uh, so it's important to follow these because it's these trees can actually be um, sort of a housing place for many birds and insects. Oh. <laughs> Am I got a lighter? Oh yeah, totally got a lighter. Here we go. Perfect, perfect. Oh, what are you doing a good job? Here? We're starting a fire. Don't you know this place has a fire ban? Why? Yeah, if you set up a fair, it may cause first the fair and uh, may impact uh, this ecosystem. Oh. So what you should do is to bring a ready to eat a meal like me, like this sandwich. So I will give you guys a sandwich. Oh, thank just you. Remember next that time. Looks tasty. Just uh, notice that policy before you go to a destination. But what about warm? How are we gonna stay warm? You just uh, come prepared, just uh, take something like this. Okay, I will also, <laughs> also <laughs> give you a gift. Thank you. So just uh, remember, you. it's ah. very important Thanks. to just protect ah. our ecosystem. Thanks. Thanks, Cheers. I appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers. Also, <laughs> don't bring this alcohol next time. <laughs> also, Does it make my body colder if I'm drinking when it's cold out? So it's just, yeah. if you're cold, just do some exercise. <laughs> okay. I, okay, okay, sorry Captain Morgan, you can't come next time. Okay, take care guys. Yeah, see you. Bye, see you. have a good day. Bye. Before you go to a destination, preparation and planning is very important. You should spend some time on understanding your destination's policies and regulations. For example, if your place has a fair ban or in wood supply shortage, you should bring some ready-to-eat meal 
to avoid using wood. Or if you really need to cook, you just take what you need, just minimize the use of wood. Is there a beautiful camping spot we found tonight, isn't it, Sean? Yes, really good. Very good. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, buddy. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, oh good. good. How, how are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. But I just want to come see, uh, see your guys' camp spot and see why you sort of chose to set up here. Oh, well, you know, we figured we'd just save weight and not bring sleeping pads, but there's a bunch of moss under us, yeah, so that's going to keep us warm. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I totally understand. I know that moss seems like a good idea to be nice and spongy, but actually that was a really bad choice where to set up your tent. You're actually causing a lot of harm to this moss. It's a really sensitive uh, sort of species or land area to set up tent. Huh. Do you have any ideas where, where it would be better? I was just looking over here and there's like this really solid spot. You know, it's great. You just have to pack it down a little bit and it's just like an awesome spot. There's no moss. It's a hard, durable surface. Doesn't say it to be hard, but it needs to be durable. And it's away from the moss. You know, really? it's, it's a much wow. better area to set your tent up and you're not gonna cause the ecological damage you're doing right now on that moss. Okay, well that's good to know. Should we move camp, Sean? Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you guys have two tents? Oh no, we're just gonna share this. <laughs> yeah, oh. one sleeping bag. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think this is a nicer spot, Sean. Yes, better. So just to recap, you guys always got to make sure when you go camping and you're traveling that you camp on durable surfaces. So if you go to a campsite and there's already a set camping pad, ensure you set your tent up on that spot. Uh, you don't want to be on soft surfaces like moss or anything that could be um, anything that could be a sensitive uh, ground that, to walk on if there's any flowers or anything. And if you do happen to be random camping, ensure you pick a spot that is durable. So on gravel or rocks or, you know, compact soil, vice, like um, sensitive vegetation. So just to, just remember that. And then if you do happen to be random camping and you're in the, the back country, ensure that if you're staying multiple nights that you move your campground around so that you're not damaging the vegetation. Oh, took that envelope. Oh, that's awesome, oh. man! Yeah. All right, cheers, Amber! to respect wildlife and others when you're on a trail. The best way to do this is by not playing loud music and keeping noise to a minimum. Another important thing is by leaving what you find. This really great antler is a good source of nutrients for rats and small rodents. So it's important that you don't bring those things with you.